Well, 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 well. Uh, thank you, wherever you are watching me from. Welcome again to today's episode. This is Tuesday Class Job Market, Part 8, or Number 8, Part 3. This one shows that we had Part 1, Number 8, we had Part 2, Number 8, and now we are having Part 3, Number 8. Number 8 was all about the CBC, the CCC, or the CEC. Child-based curriculum, child-centered curriculum, child education curriculum. It means that in relation to the job market, because the episode is all about the job market, Tuesday class job market, we are looking at what the job market really wants versus what we are releasing from our education system. And I want to congratulate the government and some educational experts, curriculum developers and the teachers who sat down ideologically and came up with a system whereby we have to intertwine, we have to mix the early childhood education that was based on seeing and doing. They could see and just do without normal classes versus the normal or the current expectations where we need a child to go to school for example in my country 844 system and then finish eight years in primary schools then four years in high school then four years in the university those are the system that we want to mingle together and come up with a whole being a whole staff that when released to the job market will be able to run to compare with the expectations of the company or of the production that we're looking for. Currently, I'm afraid to say that we are, most of us, the high population, especially in my country, we are not employed. Not because really we don't have such a big number of unemployment or not a job available. No. To some extent, also, we have to blame our educational system because the few who are employed, really, it takes the higher a better part or a better junk of finance, time, and human resource to make sure that better orientation is done and endless team building, team training is done and development to the staff that has spent a lot of years in education system only to come and be vague or void, lacking the qualities and the potential and the skills, especially in practical area. So this CBC means that we wanted to come up with a system whereby when we release a learner to the work environment, there will be some rhyming somewhere, especially in terms of practical. That's why they came up with the CBC, Child Center, because it came up that it's all about attitude, it's all about interest, it's all about aspiration, it's all about expectation. It's not all about the following of the system because most of us, we are not doing the jobs we learn from school. For example, I did HR management, but in most cases, I have been an educationist in class teaching. I have more potential, I have more interest, and I feel more satisfied when I release, when I train, when I develop. You see, when I develop, my staff, when I develop my learners better than being a HR. Now you see, it's all about the interest. And it doesn't matter whether I go to the first class in my degree level, whatever I learned, yet I'm not practicing it. Whatever I'm practicing, I never went to class for that. But you see, I am producing or I am performing better in this line that I never went to school with. Now, in short, we can say that I did a course that was not my passion, you see? So child-centered curriculum is meant to be in the interest of the child, not the learner, not the market. It's about what do you want to be, so that by the end of the day, you put all your effort, you put all your time in that, so that we release a whole being child who is developed, not only trained. And development, I told you, is all about the attitude, it's all about the interest, it's all about the satisfaction. It's all about the passion. Development is not production only. Development is a whole being, starting from your attitude, positivity in life, expectations, the hope, the faith, all how you relate with people, the colleagues, social ethics, and all that. So if you follow this curriculum, that is what it is meant.
four. Before we continue, please, if you are watching me for the first time, welcome to this YouTube channel. This is a channel where mostly I handle issues concerning children versus the caregivers. And then part two about this uh, channel is about episode that I bring every Tuesday, which is called Tuesday Class Job Market. If you want to know more about me and the programs, please make sure to visit that you visit my YouTube channel, which is called Aledo Mark. Press that subscription button, and more importantly, please make sure that that bell you press it and personalize it. This one is advantageous to you because anytime I upload a video or a comment or anybody like or new subscriber, you will be the first person to be notified. We share the the, 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 the issues here, we share the ideas here, we share the expectations here. So don't fail to like the page or the, 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 the account, comment, put a suggestion, anything you want us to discuss in relation to job market, please, we can check. Like the other day, I was just discussing with a friend of mine who was calling me all the way from Kenya wanting to know. He, she was, he was supposed to attend the interview and now we went through some course, uh, some uh, questions and all that. And I thank God, by the end of the day, uh, he managed <laughs> to get the job. That was so wonderful and we thank God for that. So please don't be left behind. Subscribe, 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 share and please let knowledge report to me. Now, Facebook page is called Common Sense Isn't Common. Common Sense Isn't Common. If you search on that, that is my page. All these things I put here in video form. In that page, they are there in written form. I put everything that I speak about there. Then the normal Facebook account is a dead mark. So I have Facebook page, Facebook account, and then YouTube account. Please support me and support the channel by subscribing. Let's go to the topic of today. Philosophies for teachers who are handling the CBC system. Being a teacher is not all about having papers and qualifications. It is something that must be from your passion. You must be passionate about, meaning that a teacher, in short, we can say is a calling. You do it direct from your heart, irrespective of the status of your learner, the age of your learner, the environment of your learner, or wherever you are. If you do it direct from your heart, that's where God also brings blessings. So we have some of the philosophies of the best teachers that should be handling the CBC. CBC is a very delicate system that if you mess around with it, if you take it as a normal, by the end of the day, you will not be releasing something that is really, that is really viable. Now, uh, the reason why I'm saying like that is because... Sorry, 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 sorry for that. Uh, you will excuse me for that. There's a shortage of power, sometimes blackout a little bit, but we are back to normal. Okay, I was saying that being a teacher is being passionate about your work and you feel satisfied after delivery and your learner passes to the next level. Now, that's what we are going to discuss today. And I have seven good or expected philosophies that a teacher handling CBC should be having. And because of time, direct we are going to them and very fast we will be uh, at least just paraphr uh, paraphrasing each and every com uh, uh, each and every point as we go over. Above that or after that, you can do more research on that than you know. And this one came in my mind so that I thought we would discuss it because one of my colleagues who was get, going to get to work, by the way, this is one of the questions that he was asked. You know, he was asked like, what are your philosophies as an accountant? <laughs> what are your philosophies? Nowadays, the interviewers uh, they are coming up with how they crown their questions. The normal things, but they put them in different ways. So I came up with now, what about if we put it like this? The philosophies for a teacher handling CBC. You want to be a teacher in CBC system. What are your philosophies? In short, the word philosophy is what you believe in. You as a teacher, me as a trainer, Mark as a tutor of the YouTube. What are your philosophies as you are tutoring or as you are tutoring your colleagues via the YouTube? 
these are the beliefs, the rules, the principles that I have in relation to the work I am doing. So as a teacher, what are the principles you have in relation to what you are doing? Philosophy number one that a teacher should be possessing is that you should believe that students are all unique and different in understanding. That's why we call it CBC. Many children might come from the same mother, the same womb, but I want to promise you that all these children behave differently. Different characters, when they grow up, different aspiration, different expectations, different attitude and all that. So as a teacher handling CBC, when you go to that class, don't look at the number. I have 30 students, I have 20 students. Yes, you have them as a crowd in the same class, but each and every student has his or her own rate of understanding, of learning, attitude, and all that. So in short, CBC teacher have the power to handle each and every learner uniquely. Philosophy number two, every classroom, school, home, culture, it's unique, it's in all nature. As a teacher, you have to believe like that. Because these children, you are handling them in different ways. The way you talk to this one, the way you handle this one during tuition, is not the same way you handle the other one. The same thing also should apply in your mind that a teacher, you should believe that these children come from different families. They come from different homes. They come from different classes and schools. Meaning that their rate of understanding, their rate of relationship, their rate of growth and development, their nurturance differs from one parent to another from one home to another, from one environment to another. So it means that even though you have them as a crowd, they have different development natures according to where they come from. So please try to handle each and every one of them according to their background. Philosophy number three that teacher should be having, a teacher is morally obligated to have positive, highest expectation for each and every learner, have hope, Employing a teacher without hope is as well as killing the hope of that child. Because apart from teaching, you are a motivator. Apart from teaching, you are a mentor. Apart from teaching, you are a parent. What are the things a parent does to the child? Not only feeding the child, not only clothing the child, but you also act as a role model. Motivate them. When they are down, talk to them. Maybe they are coming down, they slept without food and all that. Motivate them. What are you going to do? So believe that every child has the highest or the best expectation in life. Give them hope all the time. When they fail exam, give them hope. When they fail a practical, give them hope. Let them know that even the, the inventor of the light of the bulb tried it a hundred times before succeeding. So they should not only try once, then they give up. Philosophy number four for a proper quality teacher for CBC. A teacher should believe that classroom should be clean, safe, and secure for each and every child. Don't assume that one class the same for each and every person. Before you start your lesson, before you greet your children, before you prepare for a lesson or for a period, make sure that your class is safe. Make sure that the class is dry, clean, cool, noise-free, and everything is okay to enable suitable environment for these children so that they learn at their own the best way. So believe that each and every environment school is safe for that child. Toxic environment affect the development of that child. Toxic teaching or teachers uh, are also effective negatively to these children. So even the colleagues that are handling your class, make sure as a class teacher for that CBC class, your class is always safe, is always happy, happy and receptive to each and every nature. Happy teaching, happy class, happy learners, happy development. Principle or philosophy number five. Teaching is learning from students, colleagues, parents, and the community. A teacher should not be rigid. A teacher is not a small goal before children. Just give them opportunity that you can speak English or you can speak the language children can understand. You are a grown-up and you know everything. You have tra traveled, crisscrossing the country and you know a lot. That one doesn't mean that you are the best in everything. You as a teacher, even if you are 30 years, 20 years, you can learn from this, 5 years, 8 years old. Always try to listen to the children. What children want in CBC, mostly they want a listening ear. They will speak, they will open up. Apart from just normal classroom, they can even open up, tell you some of the secrets you might be looking for. 
only if you present yourself as a good listener. Learn from these children. You might know the secrets from home. You must know some effects. Give them homework to go and do. When they come with that homework done or not done, you'll be able to learn simple things that happen at home. When you ask them, what happened that you never did homework? You know, mom caned me. You know, I live with my auntie and my auntie refused to give me food and that's why I did not do homework. You also come to learn. From that, you will know from which perspective or from which angle you are supposed to learn this, uh, uh, to teach this CBC student. So be all-rounded teacher who is also ready to learn. You are teachable as a teacher. You are listenable. You can be talkative or you can be talked to, be a person who also accepts correction and accepts advices. In fact, one of the qualities when you go for the interview, tell your employer, tell your hirer that you are a first learner. That one means once you are given the system, you will be able to adjust to learn very fast from your colleagues, from your directors, from your school environment, maybe it's a new culture, and you are able to cope up with that. So a good teacher for CBC should be ready to learn from others. And learning is endless. That should be your philosophy. Number six, a teacher should be having this philosophy that a CBC, should be, a, a CBC teacher should believe that learning is an extensive, endless process with new strategies daily. Sorry, my... What's happening in my lights? My lights. <laughs> okay, good. Sorry, sorry, this light, I don't know what's happening today, shortage, anyway, back to the track. <laughs> ah, today is drama, drama, drama. Now, a CBC teacher should believe that learning is an extensive, endless process with new strategies daily, new ideas, new philosophies, be a person who is ready to improve. In fact, if you are going for the interview and they ask you what are some of your philosophy, one of the philosophies that you believe in training and development, you believe in upgrading, you believe in furthering your education, meaning that education never ends. Don't say I'm old, I'm already working, I don't want to improve. No, you have to do that. I am doing that still up to this level and I will not get tired until I finish. So long as I can get two hours, three hours per day for education, I will learn, I will do everything. Whether certificate is being got, exam is being got, learning is an endless process. Um, my children, my wives, my fiancés and everything, make sure improvement is your paramount. Number seven and the last one, the main important one, philosophy that a CBC teacher should be processing. Apart from being a classroom teacher, you are a parent, you are a role model and you are a caregiver. In short, the life that child is living at home should be practically be done at school. And that is why CBC now, we mix the early childhood development, which was called apprenticeship, seeing and doing, versus the current modern expectation or the current learning system. So even though we are coming to school and sitting in class with our colleagues, we also expect to carry that home environment to the school so that the school become more and receptive for this child to be mentally um, mentally uh, you know, prepared to accept or to receive what is being going to be taught. And CBC mostly deals with the practical. By the time you are sending them, go, come home, come from home, carry these vegetables, we are going to do practical, come with utensils, come with this, this, this. They are trying to bring that home environment to the school. You are a caregiver. Parents expect you to take care of these children as your own, not as a teacher, but as a caregiver or as a parent or as a teacher, or as a role model, all these things intertwined together, they are targeted towards nurturing the children to their development. And that's why you get most of the, these kindergarten children, primary one, primary two, they are likely to be talking too much about their teacher than their parents sometimes. You know, this is not what our teacher taught us and all that. So as a teacher, it's not all about shouting. It's not all about that chalk, marking the diaries, giving homework. No, you are a role model starting from your dress code, the words you use. If you're too much abusive, you are rejecting those children indirectly. Make sure you are not physically rude or whatever. Make sure these children take you as a parent. If you are a, 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 a male teacher, you are like a father. A female teacher, you are like a mother, like an aunt, like a big sister to them. So make sure that that nurturance, that uh, uh, parenthood 
system is in you. If you have those philosophy, I'm telling you, your class will be the best. And remember, in the grading system, to know which teacher is really performing well, we will not be looking at the result. Because grading system, again, that's out of the CBC. In CBC, we don't want grading system. We want the practical result. Who can cut this better? Who can see this better? Who can talk public speaking better? That's what we talk about now in uh, evaluation and monitoring of these children. Now, in last some of these philosophies must be accompanied by the different types of skills a teacher is supposed to possess. Skills like you have to be patient as a teacher, you have to be confident of what you are teaching these children, you have to be communication expert, be a better communicator, either public, private, be a good communicator. Then you must be enthusiastic, enthusiastic or you must be having an urge of wanting to do whatever you feel this child should be receiving. Then be creativity, that CBC, do this practical through creativity. Learn something from YouTube, learn something from people, go to the market, see how the shops are being arranged, then come and create it in your class, you create that environment for them. Then be dedicated, meaning that even extra, extra mind you have to go to make sure that each and every child really gains something from your class. Then lastly, you must be organized, you must be neat, you must be healthy, you must be energetic. With that one, that one marks the end of our episode 8, part 3, Philosophies for a CBC Teacher. For more information, please drop your comments there or any subject you want us to discuss and we will handle it. I've been your host, I've been your tutor, Mark and Edo. Please subscribe and let's communicate all through. Thank you for your listening. Thank you for your comments. For those who have subscribed, please thank you and may God bless you. Let's spread the knowledge and make sure that our country produces the best staff, the best managers, the best leaders, or the best workers, performers in short. Thank you and I wish you the best as you handle the CBC system.